Hi, thanks for checking out our channel here. This is going to be a um, how to test video, maybe how to repair video, depends on what's uh, wrong with this dumb thing. This is on a Gallagher F17. I just took thing apart. I haven't done any tests. I was getting ready to start you know, testing the battery, testing the panel, and all that fun stuff. But I, I hadn't gotten that far into it. Like, you know, I ought to make a, an updated version of this. I've done a video here in the past. Oh, a couple of years ago, I think, on how to test these things. We get a lot of these F-17s in. There's a um, guy they made these things for 20 years, from like 1997 to about 2017, uh, when they when they made the S-22 and they phased it out. The S-22 and it's the same, basically the same thing as this one, just a different circuit board in it. The battery and the solar panel are, are identical. Um, the old S-15 is made from like 97 to like 99. 2000 that's uh, those were the same thing as this one basically with a some had a push button some had a toggle switch and they had a green case but the guts were basically the same so if you got one send it in here we'll get you going you can either send me the board that's all that's wrong or you can um, send the uh, top cover of the unit if your battery's good um, the t tools you're going to need to really test some stuff is a, is a multimeter preferably a digital one uh, maybe a pair of needle nose, a uh, Phillips screwdriver, or or a uh, or a screw gun with a uh, standard Phillips bit on it. So we're gonna test the battery first. I don't, there's no notes on it. The note says issues unknown, so they don't know what's wrong with it. So we're gonna. This is the meter I'm using. This is a uh, I already pronounced that word word. Um, it's an auto range uh, digital meter. We're going to go to DC volts. It cycles between AC and DC. We're going to go to DC volts first. And we're going to cross this battery here. It's a 6 volt battery. So 4.2 volts on the battery. So the battery's no good. Well, it's low. It won't run without that. I've got another battery sitting over here that will hook onto it. A little bit bigger 6 volt, but it will work. But let's take this battery out first, and I'm going to hook it across. I've got a um, uh, DC power supply set at 6.8 volts. I'm going to put it across my leads, my terminals here, and I'm going to watch my amp gauge and see if it has any draw to it. Very little all, 0 0.08 amps, so 80 milliamp draw, and it should be drawn like you know one amp, give or take, maybe less than that, but it should draw quite a bit. I'll leave it on here for a while because the amps is slowly climbing up. We're up to half an amp draw right now. 0.6. We'll leave it on there for a while. Maybe we'll be able to bring the back battery back to life because it does look like the battery's been replaced at some point in time. We're up to a um, 0.64 amp draw right now. It's a pretty good draw with that amount of volts going into that battery being as low as it is so we might be able to save this battery we'll see that's just late it late, uh, say charging up for a while and as that thing charges up that amp should gradually go down to near nothing because it's not you know it's not drawing any amps off the battery because it's fully charged up and then once we do that we'll let it sit for like half an hour to stabilize and we'll recheck the battery but it's going to take a while we'll probably have to do it tomorrow morning but let's check this battery. I think this battery is good. The one I have in here. 6.3 is good enough. Alright, so let's pull this bottom base out of the way. Let's um, hook it up here. <coughs> I would I'll also look at getting a uh, good electric fence tester, like a digital one, preferably. The little flashing light, cheapo testers. Uh, they're real hard to read sometimes. Sometimes they're not very accurate. All right, switch is down. It's in off position right now. We'll turn it on. All right, light is flashing every uh, second or so, a little a second and a half. <coughs> and I can hear it clicking. That's a good sign. Put a tester across there. Not getting very much out of it. You can see the needle pulse in there. Alright, so it is clicking. Now, if it wasn't clicking, we'd have 
possibly more issues. But let's turn the unit off. I'm going to take this same multimeter, but leave it on DC volts, and we're going to check the output of the solar panel. And the easiest way to check that, you might be able to do it in the shop. You know, overhead lights might be enough, but you may have to tilt it up, and then as you're testing it, lift it up towards the lights to, to get closer to them, or do it outside. On a decent, it doesn't have to be a bright sunny day, but it has to be somewhat sunny. Now this solar panel, through these battery wires, the unit turned off, should be about 7 volts coming out of it. Alright, reading 5.8. See if I can hold these on there. With one hand. And then lift this up towards, my, towards the light. See, we're up to 7.2 volts, so solar panel is fine. So they've got two things, well one main, main thing going wrong with it is the um, output of the board is bad. Now a low battery won't cause it to have low output. You know, fully charged those 6 volt batteries read about 6.5 volts when they're fully charged, you know, give or take you know, 6.4 to 6.7 on average when they're fully charged. They get really close to 6, like 6.1, 6 volts, 5.9, they really start slowing down on their pulse speed um, it's, but it should still put out right you know it's a little on the lower side of the voltage on the battery if it gets much below uh, 6 volts you know 5 8 5 6 usually it'll flash once and then stop typically and eventually gets down too low it won't flash at all. Now there's three Phillips screws in there. You need a long driver to get those screws out of there. Mine's magnetized, so it's uh, pulled the screws right out. Now to get the board out of there, I've got a video on this. Now that board's probably got some power stored up in that little red capacitor right there. Now we're going to take this board, pull it towards us to separate from the case. And then we'll wiggle it and lift it up and out because you got to get that switch out that little rubber holder on the front. Ooh, look at that. Some dead ants across there. Got a cobweb up there. Now we're going to discharge this capacitor right here. Most of the time they're red. They had a few uh, versions that were yellow, but about 98% of the capacitors on these uh, Gallagher boards are red. Now we're going to go across the two solder joints. Perhaps I'm just going to use a pair of needles pliers. I'm going to touch one. And go over to this one right here. Now you can touch the board all day long, not have to worry about it shocking on accident. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna clean that board up and get rid of that bugs on the dead ants up on there. Let's, the good thing is I don't think that they caused any harm to the thing because it was still working and trying to put out. This one is missing the rubber switch cover, and also down inside, see it cobwebs in there, but this one is missing the um, switch covers gone. It probably rotted off. And this unit is a uh, age wise, it's upside down, but the first two numbers, turn it around. All right, sorry about the j jostling around. The G number is just a product code number for the whole entire unit. This long number here, so it's a 0, 1, or 2, is your, um, or even a 9 if it's real old, um, is, your, is the SEER number. Now, starting in 1999, they went, or maybe 1997, somewhere at 97, 98, 99, somewhere in that range, they went to a, a date code format. Anything before that was just a sequential number, had no date to it. So this one's a 2008 model. The first two numbers is the year it was built. And if you're curious, Second, or the third and fourth number is the week of that year. So it's built on the 43rd week of 08. So I've got a little age on it. But let's uh, clean that cobwebs out of here. Now 
There's no live spiders, so that's nice. All right, so we're let's try to fix this uh, board since it does click, and it does have it is putting out something, but not quite enough. It might have just a bad transformer. <coughs> if it doesn't click. I mean, they're not very loud to start with, <clears throat> but if it doesn't click, and but it does flash like every second or two, it could be the transformer, but more than likely we got something else wrong. So we're going to heat the solder joints up and pull solder off there. There's four solder joints on there. This version has screws on the back holding the transformer in place as well. And it looks okay. I don't see any cracks, holes, or burned insulation or Maybe it's bad on the inside, or we got something else wrong. And this transformer is still good. So we grab this transformer, we'll plug it on. The reason I had this transformer so close and ready to go, I was working on another one for another guy, and his. And I thought the transformer was the issue, and it not being the issue at all. So I put the transformer back off of that one, put his back on, fixed something else in the board, I don't remember what it was now, and he's good to go now as well. Alright. Alright, we're going to run this unit off of um, right here on the table before I put it all back in there and just to find out that there's still something wrong with it. Put the battery cord on here. Now the, the board's sitting on the table. This board is the switch is inverted so up is off and down is on. Because when it goes up inside that case it's it's upside down so then down is, or up is on and down is off like you know a normal switch. So right now it's off. Let's take this battery <coughs> And we'll plug it on. We'll get the tester out. <clears throat> we'll switch on. Now we're cooking. Almost 9,000 volts out of that thing. I said it's not very loud. But it is putting out good now. So this one's going to to get a new rubber switch cover. So that transformer is indeed bad. So I'll chuck it in the trash here in a minute. Let's go ahead and put the screws back in it on the transformer. Screws aren't real critical, but it's there just to either hold the transfer in place while you solder it, or to secure it, make sure it doesn't get bounced around and bust loose from the board. Well, I guess it's the two possibilities why it's in there. I still have to uh, put a new rubber switch cover on the front. crap up inside there. Let me uh that's one of the tabs uh, battery terminal covers from the that new battery. Uh, 
there a second one? I thought I saw a second one in there. There it is. So now we'll put it in there. And I've got a video on how to put these boards in. Just type, if you haven't seen the video, it's about eight minutes long or so. If you type in Gallagher S17 circuit board, just type it into YouTube. I've got a video that talks about how to install it, pull the board out, how to put it back in. So I put it in pretty easily. I've done it about a thousand times, so it's, it's just kind of get a feel for it once you do about a dozen of them or more, you kind of get a knack for it. Solar panel wires already plugged in. We'll get the battery wire. What the hell it went? <clears throat> All right. Let me go get another switch cover. Put that on there. I'll show you how to do. That's pretty easy. I'll show you how to do it. There's a new rubber switch cover. It's got kind of a groove in it. So this this is your back side of the case. It's the front side of the case. So you got to work it in there around that switch right there. I use the way I do it. I put the switch in the down position. I put the bottom edge of this little cover in first. I can zoom in and show you that. So we'll put that in first and then kind of get that started. And usually you can just work it around with either your finger or get a small flat screwdriver and just kind of push it in there. And there you go. That's how it's done. So let's hook it back up real quick and just make sure that it still runs. Lights flashing. My battery is a little on the low side. It's not fully charged up, but it is, it is enough to make the unit turn on. Alright, so this one's done. We'll put the put the base back on it. We'll, um, we'll wait and see how the battery turns out. Maybe that battery's still good. We'll have to let it sit there and charge for a while. It's, it's down to 0.46 amp draw, so 460 milliamp draw on the thing right now. So it may still be good. We, uh, see, it has dropped down by 0.2 amps, so it has dropped down some as it's as it's charged up. So we'll just have to see how it goes. I'm going to put a new spade connector on this one. That one had a little crust built up on it. Not a lot, but some. We'll crimp on a new spade connector. That was good. <coughs> All right, well, hopefully you like this kind of stuff. If you've got one of these, want to send it to us for a repair, have to take a look at it and get it going for you. Uh, free quotes, 18-month warranty on the repairs that we do to a unit. Till next time, see you guys later on.